Hi, and welcome to Style Thoughts by Rita. Thank you so much for your very like sweet comments and your general interest and enthusiasm in my and Raj's new essence system. So I wanted to make this little video to address three of kind of the most pressing, exciting, interesting, relevant questions that I saw coming up in the comment section for that video. Because now we're going to make videos for each of the different kind of quadrants in the Essence series. So then before we start getting all technical about it, I wanted just to answer these basic questions and give you some more information. So first I'm going to talk about how do you like actually place yourself in the system, <laughs> like how to tell where you belong. The second thing I'm going to talk about is how this Essence system actually interacts with like Kibi. Um, and then finally, I'm going to talk a bit about like, okay, so if being up, does that mean you have to be dressed up all the time? And down means like you can never dress up. And I'm just going to talk about that a little bit. And I'm going to chapter it below so you can like skip to what you think is interesting. So the first question is, how do you actually place yourself in the essence system? And to answer that question, I first want to reiterate what the actual point of this essence system is. So the like the point of the essence system is really to find kind of like your energetic home and the way that you can communicate yourself most clearly to the world around you. So kind of like how do I present myself in a way that is most organic to kind of like my personality, the way I move, like the way I look, so that people can just like really easily understand who I am, what I'm about, and how they should treat me, right? And so given that this is a system that's really about actually channeling yourself most clearly, it's really not about giving you some sort of hard rules about how you must dress. I think it does give you a lot of guidelines about everyday outfits. So for example, realizing that I'm really quite far up, I was like, yeah, I should just try kind of adding some more mystery, intimidation, whatever factors into my everyday dressing. But the reason that we also, for example, chose a lot of red carpets, examples for celebrities, is because on the red carpet, that's really where they're trying to make the impression and kind of build their brand. So the system is really about thinking about like, where are those occasions where you're like building your brand, so to speak? Like, you know, if you're a student, and most of what you do is go to class and study with people, then that's kind of where you want to be seen most clearly. And that's where you want to be like showing like the essence of yourself or when you go to a party and you're excited to like connect with other people and network with them, like whatever your job is, that's like maybe when you really want to be yourself. It's really not meant to be kind of like a prescriptive system of like do's and don'ts. So given that, how do you like, tell where you belong in the system how do you tell like which energy out of these four kind of big quadrants is the one that best allows you to channel yourself to the world and my first kind of piece of advice uh, would be to look at your previous outfit photos or just um, to like remember your previous outfits but i think photos really help when you're looking at these photos what i would recommend for you to do and this is a little bit tricky because it's a different way of thinking. I mean, instead of thinking like, ah, how does my body look in this? You know, do I look fat? Like, do I look cute? Um, I want you to really try and like connect with like the actual like energy of you in that outfit. Like when you look at an outfit of yourself and you just really like feel into it, because I love feelings, you just like, did, did that feel like me? Because there can be quite a lot of looks that maybe were not super cute on you because you hadn't figured out your lines or your colors or it just wasn't perfect, but it felt like something really spoke in your heart. And conversely, it's very possible that there's outfits where you look really pretty and sexy and glamorous, whatever, and maybe even got a lot of compliments and people were like, oh, like you should dress like this all the time. But you just like in your heart of hearts were like, mm, like, yeah, I look good but this just isn't me right so I really urge you to kind of revisit with that energy and keeping the keywords of the system in mind so was it like was it like those outfits where you felt like they're really not you maybe were they like 
to gravity kind of to bringing too much attention whereas you tr see yourself more as like this radiant person who more gives out the light you know or where like was there too many pieces so you felt a bit like you were disguised or nobody could really see you because it was too complex so previous outfit photos and then at the same time i would think about your favorite looks or the things that you are naturally drawn to. So again, like we get so many ideas in our mind, especially if you've been studying the Kibbe system, you might be like, okay, well, I'm a flamboyant natural and that means I have to be really like basic and bland. Like I should wear really long shapeless sack dresses and that's like natural. Or you might be like, okay, I'm a flamboyant natural, so I have to be really dramatic and extravagant and it has to be really extra and flamboyant. So you might have gotten all of these ideas and be kind of forcing yourself into doing things that way. So my invitation here would be like, okay, if you hit pause on all that stuff that you're supposed to be doing, and you really like just think about the things that again, like you are really drawn to, I don't mean like, oh, your outfits have been great all along. Like, cause it's very possible that's not the best execution, or maybe those things aren't the best for you, but thinking about like what lessons are there, you know? So maybe like you really like looks that have some sort of like sensuality in them, not necessarily sexy, but they make you feel sensual. And uh, you're always telling yourself like, well, I need to look more kind of like uh, polished and I need to look kind of more elegant because that's like what women should look like. So it's like that can just be a hint or if like many of your favorite outfits really allow this kind of like raw elemental side of you to come out, this can just be like a great hint that you're falling on the left. So again, thinking about like what you naturally tend to be drawn to. And just allow yourself to feel into like, well, maybe that's my home right now, right? Maybe that's not even like the best self you can be of it. But maybe that's just like where you belong right now. Another way yet to tell is thinking about the left and the right keywords or the up and the down keywords. I would use the same trick I've talked about in my jealousy video. I would ask myself, like, what am I not? Kind of like, who am I a bit jealous of? What have I always wished I could have? So personal example, for me, this would absolutely be um, being on the, like a lot of the left keywords, right? So as a woman with kind of a generally like curvy body, and I would say quite like sensual personality, whatever, if that exists, I would like think, you know, I should I should have outfits or I wish I could look like these women with like they just draw the eye to you. They're so magnetic. They're so they have this really gravity. They have such a pull. They're so elemental. Like they're so watery or so fiery or whatever, you know. I wish I could be this way and I should try to do that, you know. And then I would be like cool and, you know, edgy and this could like or you know, this would be like cool for me. <laughs> And it's just not me, so I, I don't regret my experimentation, but the experimentation really taught me so much that like what like it's okay to for me to appreciate those aesthetics. It's even okay to wish to be that way. It's also okay to dress that way. But ultimately, like when I wear these types of outfits, I just know like, oh, that's not really me. I'm definitely more on like the dreamy radiant side. Um, rather than the kind of like elemental sensual side and that's just who I am so kind of using your understanding of what you aren't maybe what you feel like you should be or want to be can be like a great clue as to where to place yourself so those are my main clues about how to tell and I want to say like if you after watching the video and maybe thinking about it right now like still it's like not really clear to you um, I completely understand that because I think that this is a very different approach to dressing because it's not about, oh, what shape is your body or you know, how big are your eyes. It's about like really how it all comes together on a very like nonverbal level. So then I would just encourage you to watch our future videos because when we talk about the different, like the left up, right up, right down, left down women, and we have a lot of examples and we're going to really analyze them, I think that's going to really help you see yourself. So like, don't give up and don't despair, but also like, let it be easy. <laughs> 
like you know you don't need to think about like oh, how do people perceive me it's like how, how do you feel like you get to decide <laughs> like where would you put yourself you know just let yourself have a little guess and see how it feels okay second question was how is this system compatible with david kibbe's image ideas and there was, for example, a lot of questions that were like, okay, how would a flamboyant natural be in this system? Or how would a soft gamin or a theatrical romantic, where do these women fall in the system? My answer for right now is, um, I don't think that they are related. I think as we develop the system, I might be able to come up with some Gen like maybe patterns that I tend to observe, but just intuitively to me, they are not related. And in the future, I'm definitely going to make videos where I choose like one image idea and I show all four of the essences to make this more clear. But right now I wanted to illustrate this with two examples. So first of all, I wanted to talk about soft gamine. That was one of the examples I got. So let's take one soft gamine, um, that's Sarah Highland from Modern Family. Um, I'm like, <laughs> I'm almost like completely sure that she's a soft gamine, even though she's not Kibi verified. Um, to me, she has a, I mean, she's very like visually petite. She has kind of this juxtaposition, but kind of yin dominance. You know, she looks great with like the short haircut. Like, I mean, uh, she looks great with crisp clothes. Like, I mean, everything to me about her is very soft gamine. And if we look at what I think are some looks that are really great on her, I would describe them as really kind of like simple, kind of breezy, kind of bare, um, really luminous and really radiant. I think like what comes off to me from these photos is like Sarah just being really like a very open, kind of like warm, accessible person who is, yeah, just really like radiant, really lighting up the room. Conversely, when she wears something that has a lot of elements in it that, you know, create kind of mystery, intrigue, kind of really elevate the outfit. I think this is a really cool outfit for her. I think she looks really cool, but I meant like, I think in comparison to the previous photos, you can clearly see that like the essence of Sarah is like not shining through in the same exact way. It's like, I just think from these kind of simpler outfit photos, you can like so easily tell like what Sarah is about and like whether she's about that or not. I mean, she's a celebrity example. So like what her celebrity brand is. Whereas like from the fancy photo, you're kind of like, okay, yes, yeah, so she's like a really, I don't know. It's like, a, it's just obscures kind of her image. So if you contrast her with Jenna Coleman, so somebody told me in the comments that she's a soft gummy. I don't really know her and I didn't look into this, but I'm going to just, doesn't matter for this example. So at Jenna, she has a wide variety of looks, but I think like she has some really amazing looks, which are, I would say very mysterious, quite like intimidating. And she also has really this left element of kind of gravity, really like bringing the eye into like into her, bringing the energy into her and very sensual, right? So I think that all of these looks are really amazing. And if you think about like, and they're quite up, like, I mean, I think on a lot of people, these looks would really be perceived as a costume. Kind of like if you think back to Sarah's outfit, um, it, on her it looks a little bit like oh so you're dressed up today whereas on jenna it looks like oh wow so that's jenna coleman fashion icon in contrast i think when we think about jenna coleman in simple outfits she can wear those she's a beautiful like hollywood lady she looks wonderful but like that special brand of like intrigue essence mystery sensuality gravity it's like i just don't see it in the photo um, and I think that you just get a really different flavor of Jenna in this photo. And I'm going to give you a second comparison now. So I wanted to talk about two flamboyant naturals. That's Blake Lively and Florence Welch. And I have an outfit of them both wearing this kind of like pink suit that both accommodates the flamboyant natural. So it's a suit that gives them a clear um, horizontal line of the shoulders and a really clear vertical because it's this pale pink. Both of them have this pink that matches their coloring, so it's perfectly in line with Kibi ID system, color guidance, whatever. 
So Blake Lively, when she styles this suit, so I have Blake Lively as a right and up person, um, which is, I think, yeah, she's very like luminous, she's very radiant, she's very refined, um, she is just like very polished and structured and intentional to me. And in the suit, you know, so she has a tie, she has this kind of collar, she has the vest, like her hair is very sleek, there's kind of these chic earrings, there's these pointy kind of minimal shoes. So there's so much about this look that is really like elevated and radiant to me. Whereas if we consider like Florence in a pink suit, so first of all, she has, she makes the suit kind of more elemental because it has this kind of like rougher fabric. So it kind of like invites you almost to like imagine the texture, to touch it, like bringing in that kind of gravity element. Um, she also really introduces this kind of mystery and edginess into the outfit by really contrasting the pale pink of the suit with this like harsh, very harsh black color in the shoes, the bag and the hat. And then if you think about how she styles her hair in this more wild way, these like accessories with kind of the studs. So all of that is very up, right? Like the shoes are very like studded. Um, there's like kind of necklaces and there's like a hat. So it's obvious that the outfit is very thought through. It's very elaborate. It's very extravagant. But at the same time, it really gives me that kind of like sensual, elemental gravity perception from the left. So I hope that this like really quick example just showed you that like there is no like necessary correlation between dressing to accommodate your kizzy type and dressing to kind of accommodate the essence and kind of like the brand that you are trying to project. Okay. And now finally, the last question is going to be, does, you know, up mean you always dress up and down means you're always casual? So my first response to this, I've already talked about this a bit, but basically it's like, no, right? It has to depend on the occasion. Um, if you, for example, are like taking your children to the park and you need to be like running around and getting dirty, then it doesn't really matter how like up you are as a person because ultimately what you need to do is be dressing for your comfort. So I do think that like you can introduce elements into your even athleisure outfit that make it a bit more elevated. But I think like it's just again going back to the system is about allowing you to kind of channel who you are most clearly. So, you know, if you're a parent, that may not be every day at the park, but it might be, you know, the jacket you buy that you wear most days to pick up, to drop off your kids at like the preschool, or it might be the outfits you wear when you get together with other parents for a dinner, right? So it's kind of like thinking about those, the, the more important situations when you can allow yourself to express more freely and in those situations, I don't mean like, oh, if you're up, you must always overdress. I mean, remember like, so Kate Middleton, I think is a great example. So I think she's really right, really up. Um, and then when she dresses down, cause she has less formal locations, I feel that she doesn't, you know, really shine to the extent that she does when she's in her most formal. But these less formal locations are also part of her job description. They're also part of her life. And they're also part of her style. So I don't mean you need to always exclude these things. And also I think um, it really depends on the person what really reads up and down based on really who you are, what your body looks like. So for example, for a flamboyant natural um, lady like me, it's like I, if I wear things that are quite structured, it gives me like quite an up perception because like, you know, I'm like the free spirit chic and my like baseline is to have a lot of movement and freedom in my clothes. Whereas a person who has a lot of angularity in their body, so somebody who's a dramatic or for example, a dramatic classic, they would probably like have the same outfit and it wouldn't read as up on them. So to that extent, the system is also like very flexible on who you really are. And finally, I want to talk about that like down doesn't mean boring, it doesn't mean plain, it doesn't really even necessarily mean like super simple. Like if you think about somebody like Kim Kardashian, right? Nobody, I mean, she's like a billionaire, so, you know, she's not a great example for like everyday life. But I mean, like nobody thinks that she has a really boring style, right? Because 
there's, you know, she's still making a visual statement or like Taylor Swift, just in a different way. And I have like some examples of like runway looks, for example, which I think that these are quite down looks to me, like down right or down left. I do think, yeah, like they're not the most down and depending on the person, I maybe would adjust some things. But I just wanted to kind of clarify that down doesn't always mean jeans, a t-shirt, kids, and like nothing else. But of course, this kind of question of like, how does up look, how does down look, that's a really big question that I'm going to be talking about at length in all of my future videos and together with Mirage. So, you know, <laughs> you just have to stay tuned for that. And if you have any other kind of leak, you know, I'm going to see what else people are asking because, I mean, I just want to explain this system so it can be as clear and as useful to as many people as possible. And again, thank you very much for watching and let me know what you think. Bye.